Let's talk about shoes. Well, not, not those kind of shoes. Shoes that you put on your plow. And let's also talk about curb guards and back drag edges and snow deflectors. The accessories that you can get for your plow. Do you really need them? I'm gonna share you my experience and opinions. Let's start with snowshoes. When I bought my plow, Western HCS, it did not include a shoe kit. And I think I spent maybe around $200 for the shoe kit, which I've used maybe a handful of times. You can do a couple things with shoes. So let's start with blacktop. Some people choose to lower their shoes when they're plowing a lot of pavement, maybe big open parking lots, because that actually does help reduce wear on your cutting edge because it wears down on your shoes as well. The problem with that is, say you're going up a contour a little, or say you're going up a hill a little bit, and then as you come back around, what will often happen is your front blade on your plow will not make contact with the ground because the shoe will be holding the plow up. So you'll actually miss a little bit of snow. You'll skim right over that because the shoes are holding the plow up. So whenever I'm plowing pavement, I always choose to keep my plows up because I always want that cutting edge on the ground. It wears down the cutting edge faster, but it provides a better uh, swipe. It, it's, it's a cleaner surface after you're done plowing. You can also use snowshoes for plowing gravel, which I do not do. You can do it. It's always been really ineffective in my experience. So the idea of using snowshoes when plowing gravel is you set the plow shoes a little bit lower than the cutting edge on the blade. And that allows the cutting edge to, in theory, just sit a little bit higher than the gravel so you don't scrape up the gravel and you just clean up the snow off the gravel. The issue with that is the gravel driveways I plow around here, they're not perfectly groomed. There's potholes and they go up and down and what'll happen is you'll be plowing and it'll, you know, it'll be going fine if you have your shoes down plowing on gravel and next thing you know there's a high spot and then you plow that and then it goes down and then it digs in down there so I don't like to use shoes plowing gravel. What I do when I plow gravel is something, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice, I plow by feel. So I'll have the controller in my hand, I'll be going fairly slow, I'll be listening, looking at the ground, and just plowing by feel as I like to call it. So I just want that cutting edge just to lightly touch the gravel. I'll be looking down out my window to see how deep I'm going. And it, it's kind of hard to explain. It takes a lot of skill, but that's what I do. I, I don't like to use snowshoes for gravel. Maybe some of you guys do. Up to you. One instance where I love to use shoes is when I plow grass. It's pretty rare that I plow grass. Generally, when I am plowing grass, it's because I want to make a nice snow fort around the house or something, and I just want to you know, pile up all that snow that I have sitting on the grass. So I'll drop the snowshoes down pretty much all the way so that they lift up the blade pretty high and it is really effective for grass. So that's my experience with snowshoes. I think you're gonna have to play around what you like with on your own, but that's generally what I've always done. Curb guards. Curb guards go right here, and they're just basically a curved piece of metal. So the idea of the curb guard is if you're plowing a driveway with maybe a concrete curb or those uh, blocks that sit along the edges of you know higher end driveways, the curb guard will protect your cutting edge and mold board from damage if you come in contact with that, which, which when you're plowing those driveways, it's almost inevitable for you to hit those walls, but always go very slow around those block driveways and driveways with curbs, because if you hit them too hard, you will do damage to them, and then you gotta come back and repair them, it'll cost you money. But plow guards, I've never used them. I, you know, I think I would like to use them, but I just, Never got them. Simple as that. All right, let's talk about back drag edges. Now, honestly, I have zero experience with back drag edges. I've never had one before, so I can't tell you whether I like them or not. I know some people swear by them, and I know other people hate them. But I can give you a little bit of an education for you new guys out there what back dragging is. Say you have a structure like a house right here, and you want to pull snow away from the house. You don't want to shovel it because it'd be a lot of work. So you're trying to save yourself a little bit of work and you can't plow forward. You can't clear the snow by driving forward. What you can do is you can take your plow, pull your truck straight in, drop your plow, 
and back drag the snow away from the structure. With a traditional blade like this, what often happens is you will clear a good chunk of the snow out of there, but the snow will actually go underneath the edge and in a lot of cases, the snow actually will be compacted somewhat. You'll have like this thin layer of heavily compacted snow. So the idea of a back drag blade is it goes on in addition to your main cutting edge and it's basically an angled blade like this. So the idea is when you're back dragging, it'll plow up all that snow as opposed to a forward facing cutting edge that'll just compact it if that makes sense. So, so again, I have no experience whatsoever with these back drag edges. That's just gonna have to be something that you decide whether you wanna spend the money on or not. I've always done okay with back dragging with my plow. Unfortunately, it's an HTS plow, so it's a lighter weight plow, so it doesn't scrape as well. I noticed that when I'm scraping large piles of heavy snow, it does tend to compact a little bit more snow. It does completely fine when I'm plowing powder, but if you have a lot of wet, heavier snows and you have a lot of back dragging you need to do away from structures, it might be something worth looking into. Let's talk about something that is quite often overlooked when it comes to plowing, and that is plow markers. Yep, these little things that sit on the edges of your plow. If there's one thing I've learned in plowing, always, always, always keep a spare set of plow markers handy with you. About three years ago, I had a plow marker break off and I didn't have any spares. I do very precise plowing and I always need to know exactly where the edge of my plow is in order for me not to damage anything and do the best job possible. When one of those broke off, I could not see the edge of my plow and it was so difficult to plow without it. So from now on, I always carry a spare set with me. I like these orange ones. They're a little bit higher than the standard stock ones that the plow came with, but they come in handy, especially when I'm going over hills and the plow sinks a little bit lower than the hood of the truck. So that way I can see the plow, you know, coming up over hills. So always keep a spare set of plow markers and that's all I say about that. All right, and the final thing I really have to talk about is snow deflectors. Snow deflectors go on the top of the mold board of the plow, and they generally face at a downward angle, and they're normally made out of rubber or something along those lines. I did a video about me making my own out of an old piece of fire hose. It was cheap, and it does the job just fine. So the purpose of a snow deflector is when you're plowing powder, if you didn't have a snow deflector, that powder would hit the base of your mold board, come up, throw it up above the plow because this stuff's so light, and it'll go on the hood of your truck and it'll collect on your windshield faster than your windshield wipers can remove it and then the windshield wipers will pack it down in the corner and then you'll get less and less of a wipe and then you'll have to stop, go out, clean it off your windshield, ask me how I know, I've done it too many times. So that year or two years ago, I made my own deflector and it does a pretty effective job at redirecting that powder. So as opposed to coming up over the mold board now, it comes up to the tip of the mold board and that deflects that powder back in front of the plow and off to the side, therefore keeping it off the windshield. So if you're in an area where you have a lot of powder, it's definitely recommended that you have one of these deflectors. You can make your own, they're very easy to make. If you go back through my video archives, you'll see the video of me making this. And honestly, I think it makes the plow look better.